All right, guys, we are rigging up for Sabina right now, but I'm gonna go ahead and do a late Pickwick recap. My best finish of the season so far ended up with a 24-11 bag on day three. A lot of y'all have seen that video. Very cool video. Wish we could have got a little bit better angles. The Yellow Tech just doesn't seem to do it for me in the way that I like watching videos, and I like making videos that I like watching. So I'm gonna try to change it up this time, run a few different ca cameras, get some different angles. If we make it to day three again like we did last time and we're not in super contention, we'll probably strap a chesty on. So just going to start out though with just the dash cam and the yellow tech and try to you know catch as many fish as possible but i'm gonna take y'all through the baits that i started doing on the sabine i mean not sabine pickwick so basically when i got to pickwick the lake was like five or six feet low by the end of day two of practice it had actually fallen even more so some people were saying it was like seven eight feet low i think by the actual gauge what the dam said it was six feet low but people said it seemed to be lower than that and i agree it did seem to be very very low Practice for me was actually pretty dang good. Had a really good practice, day two, day three of practice, got a lot of bites, got a lot of bites the way I wanted to catch them, and I really felt like it was gonna be a good turn for me. And then, we got all the rain, which I already knew was coming. You know, like, it ain't like I was blindsided by the water coming up. I knew the water was gonna come up. It ain't like I was just on this magic pattern, I was just oblivious to the conditions changing around me. We all knew the water was coming up. We all, you know, seen the projected, you know, damn discharge. So, we planned for it. and. Basically, I just didn't understand how much it was going to come up. I thought it was going to, well, I anticipated fishing on day one, day two, whenever it was supposed to be. So, I didn't plan for the water being that high, and the fish were not super ready to be there. So, on day one, it seemed like the fish didn't quite get up on the bank, and I had to sit out a little bit deeper. Let me grab this bait right quick. Grab me my old cranking box. Had to sit out a little bit deeper. I was cranking a couple of different baits. One was I was cranking a deeper diving Little John. This is actually the MD. I call it deeper diving because the way that I fish. This is a Spro Little John MD. This is the you know the standard one that dives down. I think it dives down like seven or eight feet. And when that water came up seven feet, I was able to get this thing down there in like the seven eight feet range, which is where I felt like the fish were primarily you know targeting. And then another bait that I was throwing. Got to get it in my little bit shallower box. So a lot of the. A lot of the ways that I was fishing was I was fishing grass, and in practice, a lot of the grass was like one foot deep underneath the surface and stuff like that. So I was actually throwing this color and everything, pink looking sucker, but I was throwing this, and I, I could make a super long cast fish, get it down like six foot on 10 pound test, and I was just reeling it right over the top of the grass, and I caught quite a few keepers on this, and then that was on day number one. Well, that was actually, on day number one, I lost quite a few on this thing. I didn't catch that many. I think I caught one keeper on this. I'm not 100% sure. I think I caught one keeper on this on day one. And then my biggest one on day one, I caught on a vibrating jig, a green pumpkin one over the top of that grass. I was fishing it super slow in the top of the grass. Then on day two, I'm trying to think back of how everything happened. On day two, I started off fishing, and I caught a big one on this bait. Yeah, I caught one almost five pounds on this bait, cranking a rock bluff. This is the regular Spro Little John by John Cruz, same guy that owns missile baits, catches them on everything. He's got all the best baits, seems to. But caught a big one on this, almost a five pounder. And then proceeded to, for like four hours, lose every single keeper that bit. I lost a four pounder on a chatterbait, you know, up on the side of the grass. I, I lost, you know, a bunch of fish on spinnerbait, stuff like that, just couldn't get it to go. And then finally I ran over to a clump of reeds, threw a swim jig up in the reeds and had like a, one close to four pounds, eat the untamed tackle swim jig, Set the hook on him, got him in the boat. I talked to a buddy of mine on the water. We just passed. He said, man, I done caught three down this stretch. Shout out to Harvey Horn. He said he done caught three down this stretch. I turned and went down right behind him, threw a swim jig up in some reeds again, and caught another like two and a quarter, two and a half pounder. Super nice one. Proceeded to run that for like two more hours and only caught short fish. Was having, a, was having just a time catching a keeper that day. So I pulled back up to a bluff pick up the Spro Little John again. I'm gonna leave a link in the description to the, to the Spro that I'm throwing. And threw out to a point, cranking, hook a big small mouth. Well, I, I hook like a non-keeper, lose him. Then I hook like a big one, like a four or five pound small mouth. Y'all see me do the little leg shake dance on the end of day two. This was at like 3.30. I had to check in at 4.15, I only had three bass. Hook like a four and a half, five pound small mouth, big one. Comes up, bulls under the water, I see the whole fish, he comes off. Next cast, I catch one that's over three pounds. Go to the next point and I catch a keeper. Finish out my limit at 3.52. Like I literally caught my last fish 
at 352 and I was 20 miles away from check-in and had to run all the way I had to run back 20 miles in 23 minutes which is not hard to do when I'm running 70 miles an hour but that's just how close it was when I caught my limit fish and then on day three it all came together pulled up throwing that same crankbait on the rock bluff uh, third cast I caught like a four and a half pounder my fifth cast I caught like a four and a half pounder caught two more keepers lost a three pounder then I'll go down the bank I pick up a spinner bait same one I'll be throwing this week roll it up beside a tree catch a four and a half pounder Go down the bank a little bit further. There's a there's a bluff rock with a tree laying up beside it. I slow roll the spinnerbait beside it. Catch another four and a half pounder. It's just going unbelievable. In the first hour, I had like four four and a half pounders and you know some more keepers. So I cut across the lake. First tree I flip into with a, with a D bomb. I catch one that's like a four pounder. Put him in the boat. Turn the corner. Throw a swim jig up in some reeds. And I, well, actually I threw a swim jig over a laydown tree and caught a five pounder. That was an untamed tackle swimming jig. That's a black and blue catch a five pounder, put him in the boat, go down the bank, catch another five pounder on the swim jig, put him in the boat, go and I flip in another tree with a D-bomb, catch a six pounder. I think I caught one more, I, I caught a couple more like four pounders cranking that we didn't put on video because I just didn't, like the way that I fought the fish and picked them up, I just didn't like show them to the camera and it wasn't a very exciting fish catch so I didn't put them on video. But I caught some like ones close to four on a swim jig, then I cut across the lake Looked at my live well just checking on the fish and I realized there's a fish in there that looked like he wasn't as big as the rest. So I pulled him out, I weighed him, and he was a 427. And I had done cold like a 430, a 438, a 445, threw back a ton of fours, but he, he was bigger than all the other fours, but I had done missed cold three times in a row. So I weighed him, he was 427, and I had thrown back a 445. So I go into a pocket, flip a D-bomb up in a debris mat, this was like the end of the day, set the hook, I catch one that's like a 445, cull out and I'm right back where I was supposed to be. Went, just caught a ton more fish. I lost like three or four, three and a half to four and a half pounders, but it didn't matter because it was just an absolute phenomenal day. The fish finally got up there where we wanted to be, had an absolute ball. And I was mostly flipping a missile baits D-bomb on a four alt gamakatsu, actually the tournament grade wire, you know, heavy cover worm hook. And I was flipping a half ounce Titan tungsten with 25 pound shooter with the D-bomb and I'm cranking with the Spro Little John and 10 pound shooter. You know, so it's not just a standard setup that I use all over the place. Caught some on a spinnerbait here and there. I'm throwing 20 pound shooter on that, seven foot three point blank, medium heavy. So just kind of a normal setup that I, stuff I leave on the front deck all the time is so cool for the fish to actually be biting that thing, you know, in a big tournament like that. So those swim jig bites were a lot of fun. Flipping in that heavy cover and catching one's a lot of fun. It was just, day three was an absolute blast. It came together for me. Mo had a 13th place finish, moved up, got some good points. So we need to have another good finish here at Sabine. One thing I want to say before I get off here, Tournament Tackle's doing their giveaway again for this one. So if you want to enter to try to win a Tournament Tackle gift card, go to their Instagram or their Facebook and check out Tournament Tackle and leave your comment of how much weight you think I'm going to catch in this event on Sabine River. So. Let me know. You got to figure out how many days I'm going to fish and how much I'm going to catch each day and how much I'm going to have total. So get your guesses in at Tournament Tackle. Appreciate y'all watching. Just want to give y'all a recap because I've got so many questions on how we did on Pickwick. It just didn't come together the first two days and on day three it all came together at once. So hope y'all enjoyed the videos from Pickwick. We're about to start the Sabine series. Hit the subscribe button so you don't miss them. Turn the alerts on so you don't miss them. And we'll see y'all tomorrow for day one of the Sabine River. Kyle, I'm asking for me and all of you too. We have, we all have one request. Mm -hmm. Can you please show us one glimpse of all your fish this week? Just a little glimpse in the just camera. Just stop. Just please. show them to the camera. We'll yes, try. Just if, for a second. If they're if they're over 14 inches, I'll put them in front of the camera. I'll straight Iconelli them. I'll freaking yell and do a break dance up here. Will? If they're all over 14 inches. Yeah. You have to get a little bit excited. All right, I will. Especially, we don't feel like you were excited enough on day three. Yeah. Day three. And you were catching the crap out of them. I just knew that I wasn't in contention to fish day four unless I caught like an eight pounder. So, you know, it's hard to get excited whenever you're you're not in contention to win. So yeah, I was trying to do as best I could. It was an absolute fun, like a ball of a day. Like they were out there just blowing up on that swim jig and stuff. That That is so much fun. But I wasn't really fishing for anything other than points. I'm not gonna get much more money, you know, I can't. I can't, all I can do is get points. And points are awesome. You need points bad. Points just don't make you, you know, be super excited. So, you know, if I'd have been, if I thought I would have made day three, day four or something, yeah, I would have been excited. But I can tell you, whenever you've got them big fish out there jumping on a crankbait, 
before you have a limit, you get pretty dang excited. But after you got a limit, you know you're gonna do good in the tournament, you just keep culling, you just keep moving and grooving. So that's kind of how that one went. I wasn't, I was having an absolute ball, don't get me wrong, but it wasn't like, hey man, I'm almost gonna make day four. I never felt like I was gonna make day four.